fortunate we had a in, uh, we had an open meeting um, before we submitted it to government. So the process of the pre-budget submission is usually we meet the uh, arts reps um, or the arts spokespeople from each of the political parties. We also meet the minister and we make the case for the arts. Um, we uh, did that this year and met um, uh, with all the parties and had actually really universal acceptance um, and support for all of the items um, in the uh, pre-budget submission. So we, we had a very strong hand going to our meeting with the minister um, in terms of what uh, we as a sector were asking for in the pre-budget submission. Um, and uh, I suppose it's, it's interesting to note that, you know, it's a lot of issues you'll see that we take forward um, year on year. We concentrate on three key, uh, the three key funders of our sector. So um, if I just, with your permission, just go through all of the um, 10 issues we had in this year's pre-budget submission, update you on where they are and what was achieved. Um, and what I'll do um, is basic income, it was number three in, in our ask. Um, we might leave that till the end because I think that's the thing people have uh, most um, ideas around or feedback around. Um, so with your, if that's okay with everybody, just by a thumbs up, we'll just go through the rest of the pre-budget submission and then come to basic income and we'll have more time for that at the end. At any stage, if you have any questions um, around any of uh, the feedback that I'm offering, you might pop a, a question or a, just something um, in, into the chat and uh, my colleagues on the NCFA will um, uh, feed the questions or we'll, we'll throw the questions out after if that's okay. So if that's okay with everybody, I'll just get going. Um, so the, this year uh, we asked for uh, all our primary ask, our first ask is always on your behalf to ask for the Arts Council funding to increase. Um, I suppose the huge achievement was to get that from 86 million to 130 million last year. Um, and it was a big push to have um, to call on the political um, support for that to remain at not only remain at 130 million but increase to 150 million because we know you know we know as a sector that the demand far outweighs the availability always in in the funding bodies and i suppose the arts council being the primary access point of funding for artists arts workers and arts organizations that's always our priority so we achieved our get the decision. It was was 130 million. Uh, we had asked for 150. What we do in these cases as well is we go and meet with the Arts Council, um, and in this case, we met with the Arts Council, Culture Ireland, and Creative Ireland to have a discussion around what the sector expected and needed them to get and to see if, if that was what they were also pitching because I think it's stronger if the entire sector goes to the minister and the other political parties with uh, a supporting ask uh, of each other um, we uh, the decision was 130 million we think that's a huge um, hard hard fought um, uh, number to achieve given the current um, crisis. Um, we also just want to note that going forward, we're recommending that all pre-budget submissions from going from now forward, whether we're um, the committee or not, uh, will use that 130 million as a baseline because it brings us, it doesn't bring us there, but it brings us ever closer to that European average that we have as an organisation and, and as a group and as a sector have been seeking for, for um, nearly a decade now. Um, the second was uh, to increase um, Culture Ireland's funding to 7 million. Um, in our conversations with um, Culture Ireland, uh, they didn't expect the demand, I think, to be 7 million for this year. Um, I think the outcome was that they were um, happy with the amount they got based on what um, the demand on their funding has been for the last two years, but also keeping an eye on um, the sector opening up and, and traveling more internationally. In terms of Creative Ireland, we um, what we, we suggested in our pre-budget submission um, with your um, support was that they, it remain in place 
and be refunded until 2025. And we understand that that's the case. Um, so uh, in terms then, so we'll just skip on basic income. In terms of local authority funding, uh, our, our next issue was always um, to uh, see if we could ring fence local authority funding for the arts. Uh, what we've managed to, I suppose, have in conversations with the minister and other parties is reiterate um, the importance, and we've had it with local TDs as well, with, with all of your help, is reiterate the importance of the arts at local government. Um, what we have gotten confidence in is that any arts funding coming from the Department of Creative Ireland isn't used for anything else, that that is ring fence for artistic activity. Um, we're learning that um, it will take an organisation and, and probably a political party far bigger than ours um, to have a conversa an effective conversation with local authorities all over Ireland and have all of them agree to have to ring fence an arts budget every year. And But I think it's still an issue and it's an issue we need to keep bringing to light, if for nothing else, to have people question why it doesn't happen. Um, so I think it's important to keep that local authority and local authorities promising and keeping money for arts budget for arts activity and not have that arts budget pilfered is a really important thing to, for us to keep putting on a pre-budget submission. Um, I'm open to suggestions for how we can get all, I think, 35 um, local authorities to, to agree to that um, as a principle. But I think it's something NCFA should always keep bringing to the fore and keep bringing um, to people's attention. Um, the next uh, item that we uh, asked um, for in our pre-budget submission was the review of the taxation system here. Um, the good news on that since the pre-budget submission is that a taxation commission has been um, put into place and we have been asked to submit um, a, a, a position um, uh, on behalf of the sector in that. So I'm just going to hand over to my colleague Kian, who can update you on NCFA activity in that area. Thanks, Angela. Um, we're going to work with um, uh, with accountants Gabby Smith and Bruce Stanley, uh, who have significant experience working in the arts and culture uh, sector, who will work with us to develop a submission to the Commission. None of the committee members are tax experts. So we feel in order to be able to make a, a I suppose, a proper full submission to the Commission that uh, we need to work with with accountants who are. So Gabby and Bruce are going to work with us to develop a series of um, proposals and we will share that with uh, with with all of you once the um, uh, once that's developed. The deadline for submissions is the 7th of January 2022. Thanks. Thanks, Kian. And um, so the next um item that we were pushing through on your behalf in the pre-budget submission was uh, insurance reform. So Owen is just going to, Owen Clark is just going to give you an update on NCFA's activity in the area of insurance reform. Uh, great. So uh, in 2020, we joined the Alliance for Insurance Reform. And since then, we've been working with Peter Boland to to try bring insurance reform in the sector. We've been primarily focusing on reducing liability and motor insurance premiums to affordable levels. Um, as part of the pre-budget submission, <clears throat> we called on the department and the minister to ensure that sufficient funding was in place to allow for meaningful reform of the personal injuries assessment board. Um, uh, sufficient funding for an enactment of new legislation to rebalance the duty of care um, to ensure that Angarda Shikona have the resources necessary to pursue insurance fraud and the resources there to create a comprehensive plan of action by the Insurance Competition Office at the Department of Finance and to ensure uh, the urgent entry of more underwriters into the Irish liability and motor insurance markets. Um, so we've been really taking our lead from Peter Boland and the Alliance um, and we're kind of pleased to like to see there's been um, a kind of increased call to the department since uh, a recent central bank report came out. Um, so we're hoping to see some tangible results soon and we will let you know as soon as we see them. Thanks. 
Thanks, Owen. Um, so the next issue we raised um, with the uh, in the pre-budget submission was um, the creative green um, idea. So in, in terms of where that has progressed, I think it, it fell on very welcome ears, certainly with Minister Martin, given um, she's a Green Party. Um, and we were, would love to see, we, we again don't have expertise on this. We have absolutely opinions and, and ideas on, on the committee, but if if any of you had any projects that were looking into this, I know there's a, a plan in um, Iceland where they are building, they're planting trees to offset any festival activity they have on the island. So there's, they've worked out the, the carbon replacement quota. Um, and so if there were any similar um, ideas or um, if people had any knowledge of ideas, it, it would be amazing if you could brief us um, if you would come and meet the NCFA um, committee and, and brief us on any uh, or all ideas that any of you hear about in this area, um, we we don't have any idea of, uh, we know that the department are having conversations about greening their own activity and, and how that will maybe, I don't know, re be reflected in funding. We don't know, we don't have any kind of ideas in this area, but um, I think there there is probably some fantastic, there are probably some fantastic ideas in the sector, as there always are, um, to uh, about how we can collectively be more green as a sector. Um, but also um, if the solutions, a lot of us have global networks in, in our individual disciplines. Uh, if you're hearing of any initiatives in any country, it would be amazing to start feeding those through now so that the solutions for greening come from um the the you know as always all the good ideas come from our sector so it would be great to hear those from you if you had any um the uh, next issue that we raised in our pre-budget submission and we will keep raising and we have always raised is the idea idea of um a investigating interrogating and coming up with solution for the systemic barriers for participation in the arts and um, so i'm going to ask aideen to howard to fill you in on activity in some areas of of these barriers that ncfa has been undertaking thanks angela yeah item nine in our pre-budget submission calls for an action plan to address those systemic barriers including social protection regulations um but all sorts of other systemic um obstacles that are in place which in our view contradict all the EDI work and all the public sector duty obligations of the state and Arts Council funded um, organisations. So we've been able to use our voice to bolster the calls of DADA, the Disabled Artists, Disabled Academics Group, and indeed with the help of some individual artists who are here today, we have refined this call to call for an action plan led by the department. <clears throat> in the meantime, what we've been doing is supporting um, the data group and um, supporting a recent presentation to the joint Arachthus Committee on Disability. And we've made a, a submission to that committee, which we can share with you if that would be of, of any interest to the group. The idea being that we are calling on all state organizations to uh, find ways to overcome the barriers that prevent uh, disabled artists from, from having an equal opportunity to participate in the arts. We are conscious that this is an equality issue and that equality and inequality comes in in a myriad of different ways, but we have focused on the disability issue for now because we're in a position to, to uh, bring that forward. Thanks, as I say, to the efforts of the data group. So we'll keep you posted on the outcome uh, out of that committee. And our next step is to share that paper with IREC, which is happening this week. Thanks, Aideen. I've, I've had time to have a little look at the subtitles. It is not picking up the nuance of the Irish accent, let me tell you. Um, so uh, at the final um, piece, the 10th piece that we had in our pre-budget submission, um, was uh, around research. What has really shown itself in the last uh, 21, 22 months is um, that we, we have no, we very little baseline um, information about our sector as a whole. Um, and it has um, 
not not prevented us you know it it, it hasn't stopped us um, from from um doing the, the 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 work that um we need to do and that you need us to do but it has certainly um hindered us in in terms of we don't there are no statistics around our sector so we're calling for um comprehensive research coming from the department a research unit in the department that can start to give um, the kind of measurements that other sectors have at hand. So how many artists, how many arts workers, how many arts organizations, um, if, if, if we need to make the, um, the economic uh, case again for the arts, if there is more than, than that, there is the community, there's the well-being, there's how are we going to start measuring that? Um, how are we going to start implementing how that research is done and how can we all take part in it? So um, that we think landed um, very well in the department. What we will do with the department now having reported back to you is go back on the two issues that we didn't get any substantial um, movement on and, and that would be one of them that we would um, look for um, look for more information and, and push further again for more research um, for the sector and support for research that uh, organisations are already doing or support for research that you may be undertaking yourself, some of you as, as resource organisations and so on. Um, so I might just pause there um, to see if there are um, any questions uh, coming from um Kian, you might have a quick look there if there's any questions on what we've covered so far and then maybe jump to basic income if there isn't um there's some good suggestions coming through um um people um mentioning the ccma the city and county management association which is a, a body that we have engaged with um angela sat on the um um working group la late last year with with um with the chair of the ccma so we are we are we are engaged with them and i think there are complications around uh what the ccma can recommend versus what they can legally ask local authorities to do is my understanding but um mm -hmm. so it may not be it, it, that may not be the body that we can go to but certainly we have a relationship there so we, we can explore that in relation to to local authorities um um, uh, Tommy, we're suggesting we could explore moving local authority funding to regional funding where local authorities have to collaborate. Um, Marcella says there's a problematic Arts Council policy where they will only match funding to a project equal to the amount that the local authority provides. This gun to head approach only serves to deprive projects of funding, a serious issue where local authorities have a low rate base or don't care about the arts. Absolutely. Um, and then some suggestions here around um, Green Arts Initiative, um, right. the Theatre Green Book. So, um, um, uh, uh, they're in the chat if people want to have a look at them. And uh, from Screen Ireland, um, uh, um, Hilary Morley saying venues for showing art, exhibitions, activities, pressure on planning. Um, local authorities to get advisory from artists. Galway's on post development is one to watch in this regard. Loss of key locations time after time. Um, Elizabeth Hilliard saying retax the Arts Council is calling for everyone to draw down payment for agility awards before the tax year end. The funding lasts for a year. What are the implications of any expenses are only paid in the following tax year? Um, I'm I don't know if any of us know how to answer that question, but uh, yeah. Elizabeth, but certainly we can we can bear it in mind in our discussions with Gabby and Bruce as we're developing the the submission to the um, taxation commission. Yeah, and we could also maybe ask Peter Daly for um, a resident reliable accountant for those kind of brilliant yes. questions. He's great at those. Um, so, so that's it, Angela. If you want to move on to uh, great. artist basic income. Brilliant. So if it's OK with everyone, we'll move on. And um, so I suppose the history of, of basic income and NCFA is um, I think it's been on our pre-budget submission for four years now, five maybe, including this year. And it's, it's something that we've always um, pushed for in terms of uh, the life cycle of an artist. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if it takes you four years write a book you are all those four years not earning and um, if you are writing an album if you were writing a play if you're choreographing if you're doing any activity in the arts and um, the idea of a basic income that would sustain 
a, a livelihood for an artist or an arts worker has, has long been um, on our agenda. Um, when the new, at the start of the pandemic, when the new government formed and we saw basic income, a universal basic income pilot in the programme for government, um, we, we ratcheted it up about 27,000 gears um, and got it. Uh, we had a, a, a substantial amount of conversations with and, and learned so much from the brilliant work of of Basic Income Ireland and Social Justice Ireland around UBI and, and all eight of us, and I have to commend my colleagues on the NCFA committee, we just deep dived and now all know more, far more about basic income um, than we ever did. Um, and we, 18 months ago, um, for about the six months following that and, and getting all that information, we then started to talk to political parties about it. Um, following our initial consultation with you as a sector um, around the idea of could the arts be a, a pilot for basic income. So we started to gather momentum, started to kind of put our toe in the water to see what the political support for it was. Um, and then uh, had it again in last year's pre-budget submission. Um, when it then went from pilot programme for government into the economic plan, um, uh, and it became basic income for artists. Um, we then were asked to be on um, the, sorry, before that we were asked to be on the task force um, for the Life Worth Living task force. And as we entered that task force, we came back to you again as a sector um, and uh, went through what we thought um, could work and uh, how what a basic income for artists or what at the time universal basic income in an arts pilot could look like and what it needed to have. So um, at those, I think, two consultations before um, the task force uh, recommendation, um, we had come up with a, 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 a solution or, or a design that we um, that all of us thought would work um, so that a basic income for artists um, could look like a, a sorry I'm on the wrong page here sorry um, that we came up with the the, the couple of the, the key issues we thought it needed to be um, the amount of money and um, that it would be a non um, means tested and uh, that it would it wouldn't interfere with any other social welfare payments um, and that it would be for artists and arts workers. Those are the general um, terms uh, that we all agreed on. So we pushed that. I was the um, part of the task force um, item one, which became item one. So what they did in the task force, they asked us all to come up with the things that our sectors needed the most. The one thing that everybody, every universally, part of the fund, um, on the task force came back with support for was basic income. Um, for artists or a universal basic income. Um, so politically, it became, went from universal basic income pilot to basic income for artists. We understand now that these are separate things and we had to see clarity on that um, ahead of our pre-budget um, submission. Um, uh, but the clarity we now have is that universal basic income and basic income for artists are two separate things. Um, and what we will continue to pursue with um, on, on your behalf is the base is what the basic income for artists will look like. So subsequent to the task force, then we were asked to um, present an idea to the implementation group of that task force, what we think basic income should look like. And we came back to you again for a meeting. I think that was August, if I remember, maybe earlier. Um, and uh, the last couple of months is a blur. Um, but uh, we uh, came back with the, the, the design of, and, and all of you um, fed into a, a substantial number uh, of job descriptions. So we came up with ideas of how, may, how would this be selected? How would people go around being selected? So the, the conversation came up with a couple of other key ideas that we added in then to our um, presentation to that uh, implementation group. One was that it would stay as close to 
um, that 325 is recommended by the task force as possible, that it remain non, non means tested, that it remain that uh, it would not affect any other welfare support payments. Uh, it, as far as we know, it, all of those are key items now of what's been planned. Um, that the other ideas we came up with then was that it was important for us to get the wording artists and arts workers. Uh, because we were, you know, it, the initial description with artists and, and we collectively uh, at that meeting thought that that was too, um, uh, that we that we should make sure we specifically said artists and arts workers. So that, no, it's great to hear the minister say those words in, in at Eroctus um, or in the Doyle uh, last week and, and to get that clarified. Um, what was also clarified was something else that came up at that meeting was that um, emerging and professional, um, all arts is professional. If you've cho chosen to be an artist, you're a professional, but that emerging and um, developed careers could both um, benefit. And I suppose our, um, what we came away from our last meeting with you with was that the, we absolutely, what we didn't want is, was another Hunger Games. Um, so we also suggested that it be not competitive so that you would uh, register your interest and that you would that then once the department have decided what design it's going to have and what their criteria are going to be, that it would then be selected by lottery. And I think judging on Minister Martin's uh, comments again last week on uh, basic income for artists, it looks like that's uh, one of the key things they're going to do with it. In terms of update, um, we uh, have, we know that the department has um, appointed a, a coordinator, a stakeholder coordinator. So we're, uh, we're expecting to hear about stakeholder meetings. We would encourage all of you um, as individuals, as artists, arts workers, as organizations, as resource organizations, um, to feed into that, um, we have pursued basic income, universal basic income, basic income for artists as a committee on your behalf for the last four years. And we are recommending that if, if, we, weigh, if we don't go ahead and, and support basic income for artists um, in the form that it's currently on offer, it could be about a decade before anything of that sort we think we don't know but we would be fearful that anything of that sort wouldn't be available again for for more than a decade i think 2000 is a very low number um and you know the the again the research that we're calling for would would have if we had that research to to hand we we made the argument that there were 14000 artists and arts workers on pop uh, in the height of the pandemic and that's the 14,000 was the number we went on in all of our conversations with political parties and with the department. So 2,000 is, is, um, is not the greatest number and it's not what we would have wished for, but it is what's on offer. Um, so I suppose at this stage, we imagine that NCFA will be asked to um, present or, or, or have an opinion again during that stakeholder process um, we'd love to today hear any updates on what people think, um, any ideas you have on how it can be rolled out um, and answer if we can. And, and just to make very clear, and I know you all know this, but I think it's worth saying it. Um, we're not designing universe. We're not designing basic income for artists. We've done all we can to get this on the agenda. I'm incredibly proud of this committee um, and that of you as a sector that the work you've done again and again and again and sharing and and discussing and I know loads of you have had discussions with local politicians and I know we've all done a brilliant job of work of bringing this forward um, on, on a political level so I think um, it's it would be great to keep the momentum up if it um, and, and the final thing I would say is if you have a chance um, uh, Owen you might put in the link for the the last second last meeting or the last meeting we had we had asked everybody to put in job descriptions for artists and arts workers should the department be looking for you know what is a 
you know, music producer who what is a publisher and, and all of these. So if you ha have a look through the 160 jobs and if there's a job that artists and arts workers in your sector do or you do, that's not in there. If you could add it, that, and that's a live list. And um, so Owen can share that. And if, if you're not on the list, we would love you to just add your job or your activity, your artistic activity to that. Um, so that if we're when we put that forward as um, an outline for the department to help them and um, that we're making sure that everybody's job is captured. Um, so uh, I'm, I, I'll add, answer everything I can with the knowledge we have so far. Um, but what I'd love to do is to hear um, any kind of feedback people have now that it's our first time talking to you since it was announced in the budget that the uh, basic income for artists will be made available. So, Kian, if you want to maybe feed me some. I'm going to pause the recording now, just so we have that.